Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be reading chapter 7 of The Chocolate Touch. Um, enjoy, hope you enjoy. All right, boys and girls, Miss Plimsoll said, it's almost time for lunch. Clear up your things, paint pot secure, securely closed, brushes washed, painting and pinned and laid out to dry, drawing boards stacked against the wall. Ah, the bell. Front row first, Timothy to Mo- to leading, then Robin, in single file, go. John alone walked slowly in the throng, hurrying along the corridors to the cafeteria. The cafeteria was proud. The school was proud of the cafeteria and the food served in it. The room was spacious and bright, with the windows all all the way along one side overlooking the playground and the playing fields beyond. The opposite side was wholly taken up by the shiny silver service counter. Several boys and girls were already settling at tables by the time John took his place in the line. Enviously, John noticed the boy at the nearby table suck at straws dipped in milk bottle that was dull frost with frost frost. John could imagine the refreshing taste of cold, creamy milk. At another table, a group of girls were eating fat red cherries. John could almost feel the firm fruit on his tongue and the pleasure of biting through the tart, juicy plump pulp. The cherries must taste good. They must be thirst quenching. John unhappily took a tray from the pile and slid it along the rails in front of the top of the counter. He put a paper napkin, a glass, and a streaming and a gleaming spoon, a knife, and a fork on the tray. It seemed hardly worth the while, but he felt he might as well try the food and drink. Perhaps if I eat it a different way without letting anything touch my lips, he muttered, my I will lunch won't change it to chocolate. He he was he was not very help hopeful. What? asked the boy standing next to him. Nothing, John said. That you said I thought you heard I heard you say something about chocolate, the boy said. I hope this is the day for chocolate cream pie, he had. That'd be super on chocolate cream pie days of the past, John known to skip the main course so that he might spend all his lunch money on dessert. The, uh, the thought of four pieces of of chocolate cream pie now suddenly made his stomach feel as though they were on a roller coaster, an uneasy, flibberty, gibberty sensation. John shuddered. Okay, he commented, wrinkling his nose. The other boy shrugged his shoulders and started to choose the meal. John took a plate of cold chicken and ham, potato chips, and a crisp, moist lettuce and tomato salad. The white of the chicken, the pink of the ham, the gold of the potatoes, the pale green of the lettuce, and the red of the tomato looked delicious. He also took a half of pin, pint of a milk, a thrust a thick crust whole wheat roll, and a cold pat of butter. It's a tumble of water with ice cubes clinking against the glass, and a fresh fruit, slices of orange and grapefruit and banana and grapes. John's trade was loaded with the sort of meal his mother was always trying to get to persuade him to eat. Till today, John had always thought it was pretty dull to eat sensible things, when they were sweeter food and drink th- to had to be. When there was sweeter food and drink to be had. Today, however, the sensible things looked most appetizing, and his mouth began to water in its new sticky way. John paid for the lunch with his money his mother had given him. Went on went to an empty table, sat down. His fingers trembling slightly with eagerness, he ate a slice of lettuce. His fork went down through the leaves with a promising crunch. He he struck the prongs of the fork into his mouth-sized piece of lettuce, carefully inserted it into his mouth. 
the lattice didn't the, let, the lattice didn't touch his wide stretched lips. John's teeth came together in a crisp layer of sweet chocolate. He took a small piece of potato chip, tilted back his head until he was looking straight up at the ceiling, dropped the morsel straight down into his throat. He felt down a sharp fragment of sweet. He felt it go down a sharp fragment of sweet chocolate. He tried the milk, the ice water, the fruit. Every solid and liquid that he sampled was transformed as soon as it entered his mouth. Then he became aware of the shocking nobility he, that he that he hadn't noticed at breakfast. At the rim of each glass, there was a small semicircle of a plaque brown. The bowl of his spoon. The ball of his spoon and the prongs of his fork had become brown. As John watched, horrified, areas of ma- magic chocolate slowly spread until at last the glasses and curlity were all solid chocolate. The trouble was unquestionably growing worse. John's scalp tightened with fear. What am I going to do? He asked himself miserably. miserably. Oh dear, oh dear. What is going to happen to me? Leaving his tray of chocolate food and drinks and utensils, John stumbled away from the cafeteria and out to the playground. That's the end of chapter 7. Um, next time we shall read chapter 8. Maybe. I wonder. Oh. Oh, no. Until next time, goodbye.